Turban Legend By the time Vince arrives at the Philippine Airlines departure terminal, it is already bustling with the rest of souls who, with their balik bayan boxes, have transformed the terminal into a warehouse, as if they're returning to the motherland on a cargo ship rather than Asia's first airline carrier. Comedians use this durable cardboard boxes as materials for their Filipino flavored jokes. How is the Blake Bayon box like American Express to Filipinos? Because they never leave home without it. Everywhere Vince turns are boxes, boxes, and more boxes. Boxes secured by electrical tape and ropes. Boxes with drawstring covers made from canvas or tarp. Boxes lined up like a fortified wall behind check-in counters or convoying on squeaky conveyor belts of x-ray machines. Boxes blocking the Mabuhe Express lane for first and business class passengers. Boxes stacked up on carts right beside coach passengers standing in queues that are straight only at their starting points before branching out to form more or converge with other lines, bottlenecking as they near the ticket counter. Boxes that ought to be the Philippines exhibit at the next World's Fair, Vince tells himself as he navigates his cartload of Louis Vuitton bags in and out of the maze. Airport, he laughs, as he imagines an entire terminal buried in Filipinos' most popular and preferred pieces of luggage. With a balik bayan box, Filipinos can pack cans of Hormel corned beef, Libby's Vienna sausage, Folgers in Spam, perfume samples, new or hand-me-down designer jeans, travel-sized bottles of shampoo, conditioner and body lotion gleaned from Las Vegas hotels, and appliances marked with first world labels that, as anyone who's been to the Philippines knows, can easily be purchased at duty-free right outside the airport or from any of the crypt-like malls that are so gargantuan they're a metropolis unto themselves. Filipinos will e even throw themselves into these boxes, as was the case of the overseas contract worker in Dubai. The man, an engineer, was so homesick that, unable to afford the ticket, most of his earnings went to cover his living expenses and the rest to his wife and children. He talked to his roommate, who was homebound for the holidays, into checking him in. He paid for the excess baggage fee, which still came out cheaper than a round-trip airfare. In road to Manila, he died from hypothermia. Vince, who had heard the story, from his old sister Jing, didn't buy it. There were too many loopholes, too many unanswered questions. Like, wouldn't an x-ray machine in the Middle East detect a Filipino man curled up inside a box? He simply dismissed it as a turban legend. You are missing the point, brother, Jing said. It's not the mechanics that matter. It's about the drama, the extremes a Filipino will go to just to get back home for Christmas with his family. Thank you.